Hello everyone, Rob Garcia with Heritage PPG. I'm here today for another Mass Tangent with Kevin Leeper, and we're going to talk about Gravity G Plus line of fertilizer that we're going to launch here this spring uh, throughout the United States. What a long, strange journey, huh, Rob? Who would have known that product development would take such a long time? Oh, unbelievable, Kevin. How, how long do you think we've actually been working on this, this project? It's been over two years probably from conceptualizing the idea to actually being able to get it into the market. And now we're discussing it so that customers and everybody has a sense of what the product is, what the concept is. And I think that they're going to really see good results with these products and enjoy them for a long time to come. There's a lot of different components that are a part of this idea. So Rob, I want you to go over what is the concept? How did you come up with it? And then how did it evolve to the point where we're doing the Gravity G Plus line now? Great, great question, Kevin. So um, it was about almost 15 years now, actually, that uh, I was asked the question. Um, we had some very dry uh, summers. We'd had some poor snowpack for the winter. So Colorado was in uh, the early stages of a drought that hit us pretty hard 10, 10 to 15 years ago. And so I was asked by the city of Colorado Springs, they're like, we want to know more about, about wetting agents and water management products. And, and, and those are so popular and used all over the golf industry, but they hadn't gotten into some of the other turf grass markets throughout the United States. And one of the things that uh, was an issue was the fact that we had to find a way to apply it. So in that golf market, it was always being applied as a liquid application. And so we, uh, we, we didn't have that capability um, at that time in their parks and their common ground in Colorado Springs, the, the city was taking care of almost 2000 acres. So there was no way to utilize a wetting agent in a liquid application. So I started talking to our fertilizer blenders and manufacturers to see even if the idea of putting a wetting agent onto a fertilizer was, was was they were capable of the process. We saw at that time, and we still do today, that we see insecticides and herbicides especially put on to a fertilizer and we put them out with a, a, a dual application. But could we do these other processes? So we looked at it. We started working with uh, Aquatrols at the time and one of their wetting agents, and we were able to do it. So we originally made the first product was um, with a, a wetting agent called Synergy. And we put that on, we had great results. It was easy for the customer. It was, it was a very clean product. And then along the way, I was exposed to another product that was called uh, 46 Black, and it was a Humate coating. So again, I sent samples of that product over to our blender and he worked with the product and he was able to fine tune and start to manufacture that product. And along the way, we came up with the idea that, hey, when we do this, if we put both products on the fertilizer, it really didn't significantly affect the cost of the bag. But what it did is allowed us to put out a good quality fertilizer application with a humate application and also a wetting agent application all at once. So now the customers that couldn't do that liquid type applications because of either the acreage, not having the equipment, or in many cases, not having the app applicator and the, and the qualified person to actually do that, we were able to do that with a granular. So that evolved, um, the city started using it, and then we started to uh, give access to the products to uh, many of our golf and other, other lawn care accounts here in Colorado. And essentially the whole concept and the idea exploded into our market, you know, like I said, 10 to 15 years ago. And it was an iconic bag too, that black bag. It was. 46 black synergy. Yep. People know the bag, people know the products and they know that that type of product with the combo wedding agent humate technology is going to work for their property and, and one of the other things we did with some of the early blends kevin is that we uh we took those blends and um looking at and knowing you know working here in the state for so many years um we, we have very poor soils and so we also wanted to add some organics so many of the original blends they had a good slow release source 
They had some organic. And so we started to use organics as the filler in those blends. They had Humates from the 46 Black and they had a quality wedding agent. So the customers that started to utilize the products started to understand that they were not just getting a fertilizer application. They were getting a turf management application. And that's really what really took off with that. And again, we were also experiencing drought. So what we then saw was people that were utilizing the product their their turf quality was so much better than areas that were not getting the complete program from from the fertilizer that we had developed we had people come in and like you said they would walk into our facility or they would walk into some of our resellers that were selling the product here in colorado and they would ask for the black bag that was i need the black bag what blend we have four blends you know because we slowly started to develop more and more blends from the original two that i developed when i first got the product going for the city of colorado springs so we don't have the black bag anymore the new gravity g line is going to be in a yellow bag we've had this history with the 46 black and the synergy wedding agent they did really well for everybody now we've got these newer technologies we have our own proprietary technologies that we're going to start putting into the bags what did the process look like of finding these new products and then understanding if we can put them on the fertilizers and what was the testing like? You know, give us some background sure. of these new Gravity G lines and, and what we're looking at here. So, so what we wanted to do then is we wanted to then take products that were part of our proprietary portfolio and look at what we were capable of putting into the bag and then we also wanted to make those those proprietary products available in their straight form that customers that were utilizing the fertilizer g plus line would be able to then also supplement their programs with the actual standalone products so obviously the first one that we looked at was a wedding agent and we worked with our manufacturer of our wedding age and proprietary line. We found that our AquaCare was a great choice. It was the right viscosity. It's a very high concentration uh, product. So you're getting as much load as possible, but yet it was in the right, right viscosity to be able to be applied to the fertilizer. We then looked at our micronutrient line and we chose our micro surge, which is um, when you look at our micronutrient line, we have micro surge. So that gives you your upfront with a little bit of chelation and we have micro guard, which is a fully chelated product. We chose the micro surge knowing that a majority of this product was going to go out on turf. So everyone with turf, they want their iron readily available, but they also want a little longevity. And that's something in other granular lines you can't get. The majority of granular lines, they utilize iron sulfate, iron oxide, or iron sucrate as your iron sources, which are all ones that once you water them in, they break down. But the key with our process was they were not on all of the prill. When you make a blended product with iron, you add X amount of iron based on the percentage that you're trying to hit and you blend it in. So there's a little iron piece here, a little iron piece there in the blends. Now, the way we're doing it, we're putting on the, the micro surge on all of the particles. So there's some iron and micronutrients. And that's the other part that's key with fertilizer is that when you look at blends throughout the United States, most of them only focus on iron. Probably the next most popular uh, nutrient to be added would be magnesium. But really those are the only two, unless you go to a full micronutrient pack and it's still it's going to be a prill blend we're putting the micro surge on all the particle so that was the next one we looked at then we looked at we need a replacement for our 46 black that coating it had some issues in certain parts of the country it's affected by hu humidity somewhat so we wanted an alternative so i started researching around and i wanted to find a good quality humate that is water soluble so it breaks down rapidly and that can be blended into the blend so that we have a good high concentration of humates in the blend and we don't have the issues with the coating and the clumping in in humid climates so i started to look around and i settled on our black caviar that we have added to our proprietary portfolio and that product is uh going to be available in our g plus blends and also as a straight product um, the other thing behind the scenes that we're working on right now is we are also working on adding 
uh, black caviar in uh, 100 SGN. Currently, we only have 200 SGN for our fairway and lawn care blends, but our goal is to be able to also get our black caviar highly soluble humate product into the golf market for greens and teas. So that's kind of the ones that we've settled on. Um, we did also look, and Kevin and I worked on the feasibility of adding our PGS uh, like we do with our grass seed blends, but we ran into some registration issues and we didn't want to slow the process down with PGS uh, because Gravity PGS is an EPA registered product of IBA, uh, gibberellic acid, and auxin. So we decided to hold back on that. And we're looking at some other alternatives right now because there are ways that we can get these plant hormones into our fertilizer blends um, from other sources. We could utilize uh, some natural based products. And so because of that, then we also decided to um, switch out from the PGS and go to our Kelp Plus. Uh, when you when you look at what is actually in kelp, um, some of the things that you find are you get your colloidal minerals and you do get some of these natural plant hormones. So that was a way to get some similar product to PGS, but yet not have to deal with that strict, more stringent registration because of it being EPA registered product. That's a great overview. Um, looking at all the products that we're adding. One of the coolest parts about this G plus line is that the majority of them, aside from the Gravity G Black Caviar, which is a new product, are all liquid sprayable products. Yep. So now you've got a whole nother segment of customers and even our existing customers who are used to using these products are now going to be able to use these high quality, you know, performance products, AquaCare, MicroSurge, Kelp Plus, which historically have only been sprayable sure. on a granular form. And they're going to be able to go out and see the results with these products now. Yep. You know, and then, and then one of the things that I think we should note is that along the way, also knowing and learning along the process that we've went through is we found that, you know, some of our other markets, whether it would be uh, high end golf fairway applications, they want a different size particle. So something that we never were able to offer with the original 46 Black Synergy blends is we now have the ability to make 150 SGN, you know, collectively in the market. A lot of people call that mini prill. And again, we're working towards uh, G plus greens grade products as well with one of our manufacturers. And I think that's something that probably, um, if I had to guess, we'll launch sometime early in the uh, first quarter or start of the second quarter within, in 2024. All right, Rob. So let's get into some of our Gravity G plus blends. We've got seven different blends. They're broken down you know, sometimes by region, sometimes by market. Yep. I think everybody that we sell to should be able to find at least one of these products that's going to work well for them at some point of the season in their program. Sure. sure. Let's start with the minis. We've got two of them. What are your thoughts on the, the two blends? So basically when we made these minis, um, we put together, these are designed for golf course fairway applications where they want the smaller particle size. So it breaks down in the low height of cut or sports turf is another high end sports turf is another place where we use a lot of uh, a mini prill 150 SGN product. So what we put together is, um, we put together our 18, 10, 18, which we utilize methylene urea as the slow release source. And then we put in AquaCare and MicroSurge. So we have a wetting agent, a good micronutrient pack, in a mini with a great slow release methylene urea nitrogen source. And then because we have some parts of the country that we're not allowed to use phosphorus, we made a similar blend, and that is our 22020. And that's a mini prill 150 SGN with AquaCare and MicroSurge, but no phosphorus for those parts of the country that have phosphorus restrictions. So those will be, those will be great on your short heights of cut, sports turf, and they're gonna give a good overall release from the methylene urea. Yeah, and I like the, the minis, especially having the MicroSurge. One of the ideas that you brought up earlier with our new MicroSurge on the Gravity G Plus blends is that it's all coated on every prill so you're not going to get certain parts of the course or the field with more iron or less iron like you would in a normal npk blend 
And that's that's something that um, a lot of people struggle with with fairway applications with traditional blended products is that because of, again, the way that I described how the iron is put into the bag and you got a particle here, a particle there, et cetera. And a lot of these, a lot of these customers in those markets don't go at a pound of end. They only want to put out maybe a half a pound to three quarters of a pound. So without the mini prill extra particles per square foot, you get speckling with, with those types of products. You're not going to get the speckling because every particle has some of the micronutrients and iron on the particle. So it's going to be a lot better for that type of, of a, and that's something that really turns off golf course superintendents and sports turf guys. When you get this speckling on your field after a fertilizer app and it takes, you know, a couple good mowings and waterings to really get rid of that, that effect. You know, and a lot of these customers are probably already using a AquaCare product or yep. a microsurge product from Heritage PPG. So this is just another way to incorporate those two products into their program. They're already going to be using a mini SGN fertilizer throughout the season. Put one out that has an AquaCare and a microsurge on it as well. And I, th I think it's important to let people know that um, when you're utilizing wetting agents, especially, um, if you put them out all the time and it's more of a preventative, proactive approach to water management, you're going to have better results than, oh, it got hot today and I need to put a wetting agent out. In those situations, it's almost too late. Those those repetitive applications. So getting out those extra supplemental wetting agent applications with your granular applications that you're already going to make only helps to, you know, to increase that preventative proactive approach. All right. Um, moving on to the next few blends to get started with the gravity G plus line, Rob, myself, Tyler, we talked to people, we got thoughts from around the country on what type of blends are people really looking for. Yep. We wanted to condense it a little bit so that the list wasn't too extensive and made sure that we covered the basis, but we had a nice mix of products here. Uh, one of the ones that I'm most excited about is the starter fertilizer, the 1824-6. I think yes. this is going to be a great product. I think people are really going to like it. Uh, give us your thoughts on the starter fert. So, yeah, I, I think that was something that in many of our regions, we were missing a good starter fertilizer. Different guys in different parts were doing different things. There was really no uniformity across all of our locations and all of our brands. So we put the starter together. Um, when you put a starter out, we're trying to germinate grass seed. We have a lot of research that comes from academia that shows that extra phosphorus really helps to start that process. So we have a higher phosphorus relative to the nitrogen ratio, and um, we're going to get increased germination. Along the way, then, we added in the AquaCare. <clears throat> Another thing that people struggle with when they're trying to germinate seed is keeping the seed bed, mo seed bed moist when we're trying to germinate that seed. So this is going to help with our watering practices. One of the things we see, the people either go too dry, they don't water enough and they don't get good germination, or they go too wet and they and they basically drown the seedlings. This is going to help us to keep a nice happy medium and keep a good uniform uh, moisture content to get that germination process started, get those seedlings up and get those seedlings established. Uh, then we also added in the black caviar, because in many situations, a lot of these are not going to be complete new seeding projects. They're renovations. And, and it's good to let the humates, get the humic and fulvic acids into the soils, let them help with the overall soil structure. And we have so many important things that happen when you utilize humates that adding the black caviar seemed like a good choice. So I think it's a great product. The other thing that we did is many people and a lot of starters out in the market are all quick release nitrogen. So if you have if you have a turf grass species, say uh, ryegrass versus bluegrass, ryegrass germinates faster, bluegrass takes a little longer. As we're doing that extra water and we only have quick release in the bag, we're burning through our nitrogen that we put out. So maybe the seedlings get up, but it took a little longer, cool soil temperatures, other environmental variables that slow down the germination. So having a little bit of slow release in there to have some extra nitrogen so that we don't immediately need to make another fertilizer app once we have the seedlings up and starting to establish them. So I think it's a good, well-rounded product in our portfolio. It's a premium starter fertilizer. It is. The, I don't think that the price is going to 
scare people away from no. using it. Yeah. No, I don't think so either. I think it's I think it really fits the market and people when they understand the benefits uh, that they're going to get with that product, um, I think they're going to uh, they're, they're really going to like the product. Definitely. And since you brought up the black caviar, the Gravity G black caviar, um, it's in that product. What are the other uses that we're going to have for the black caviar just as the standalone product? Like, where do you really see that being used? So so in, in, the, in the turf industry, especially at aeration, that's a time when we see a lot of people put out granular humates. Um, so we're going to see the utilization of black caviar in our spring and fall aeration programs. And when we have poor soil, um, especially heavy clay soils, there's a lot. There's a lot of data and research that shows that um, adding humates at that time helps to flocculate and to break up that clay. So at aeration, that's a great time to get that product down and into the soil profile. So I see a lot of uses for that. And then, and then a lot of people, um, they they you see a lot in a lot of liquid programs. You see a lot of people putting out humates on a monthly basis. So now with the black caviar. If they don't have that capability, or again, we go back to those large acreages, but they want to get some humates out, this is going to give them the ability to do that. Yeah, we've seen some pretty good results with this one already. A lot of a lot of sales already. Is, um, it's been a great product so far. Uh, the next product to discuss, which is kind of one of those that can be used across a lot of different markets, is that triple 14 product. Yep. yep. So um, one of the things, um, you know, having a history and coming from the landscape market, um, a lot of people look for a good granular to utilize for ornamentals, perennial beds, trees and shrubs. Um, and, and so we put together the 141414, and that product is going to have the AquaCare, MicroSurge, and Kelp on it. Uh, we utilize some of the uh, methylene urea as our slow release source to help give that constant feed. Uh, methylene urea is a carbon-based nitrogen slow release. So the microbial activity in the soils with our ornamental beds and around our trees and shrubs will slowly break that down and feed that nitrogen over a long period of time. In a lot of cases with established ornamentals, you don't need a lot of nitrogen uh, throughout the growing season, but you need a little. So this product and a lot of those ornamental um fertilizers that we see in the market tend to be that one to one to one N to P to K. So we built that product around that, but yet also uh, knowing that in many of the, in many of the markets, um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these ornamentals are not on irrigation. They might, they're not on drip. They're older facilities, older irrigation systems. So they don't have some of the newer micro drip and other ways that we can water our trees and shrubs. So knowing that we want to get as much moisture when we get natural rain down there to keep those ornamentals nice and healthy. And where we really saw this is we've had parts of the country now that are traditionally wet all summer. Not a big deal. Trees and shrubs do great. We had drought in, in Houston. We had drier conditions up where you're at in, in Minnesota. So that'll allow us to help better water manage that natural rainfall and get it into those trees and shrubs and into those beds to help with the moisture. We also added the micronutrients to the, the micro surge to this, to this product so that um, when we get into some of these high alkaline soil areas like what I experienced here, we're adding some micronutrients, trying to trying to help with that chlorosis that we see with our, our ornamentals. Maples is a great example here. Any of your maple species here where we have very high alkaline, a high pH soils, we need to add some extra micronutrients. This is a way to do it. And then again, the kelp, getting those natural plant hormones and just building a good overall well-rounded tree program, very similar to many of the liquid programs that I build with the other proprietary products for my ornamental applicators, but allowing them to do it in a granular form if they don't have that uh, uh, the application equipment and that capability to do those types of applications. I see this triple 14 product as being one of our more popular products maybe not moving the most volume overall between the seven blends, but I see more customers using this specific blend than maybe any of the others, just Absolutely. because of it. Absolutely. You know, so many uses for it. Uh, the next one is kind of more site specific to our Southern states. We had some discussion with some reps that were interested in the Gravity G Plus line, and uh, we wanted to know what were their thoughts. Sometimes you're getting some different nutrient needs down in Florida, especially. Tell us a little bit about the 101015 product. 
Yeah, you know what 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 that came about is talking to some of the southern uh, sales reps. Um, they wanted what they called a stress relief product. They wanted a product um, in certain times of the year. They're not a- allowed to apply I- or nitrogen. They're not allowed to use phosphorus. So they they get into somewhat of a of a, a deficiency. And when they are allowed to in these areas, they want to get back and they want to get recovery. You know, maybe they're coming out of the hottest time of the year and they've had decline for a long period of time. And now we're able to utilize nitrogen and phosphorus and then they want to get a product out. So in, in, in most cases, um, the other thing that they're not so much worried about longevity, uh, they want to get that recovery and that and that and that get that get that turf back to a healthy state. So by doing that, this product has a little more quick release in it has the phosphorus. And um, it also has the micro surge for some micronutrients and the aqua care because of many of these situations we're coming out from the dry time of the year. We want, we need recovery and, and they're getting back into there. So it's really interesting to watch the differences in the markets when we're dealing with some of these warm season turf grass versus the traditional cool season that you and I are more experienced with. For sure. <laughs> and then, uh, the last two that we've got, these are probably more of the the high volume LCO, yep. large acreage, maybe some rough on golf courses, uh, the 26010 and then the 32010. These are going to be great products. I think people are already really excited about these. I've had great discussions already. Yep. What are your thoughts? So, um, oh yeah, no, these are great products. Very similar to some of the ones we've developed in our, in our, in our previous line when we were doing humates and wedding agents. And um, so what we did is we put together two products, AquaCare and MicroSurge and Black Caviar in both. And then what we did is we varied the amount of slow release and uh, the amount of, of, of stabilized nitrogen in both of these blends. So the 26010 has 50% stabilized nitrogen and the 32010 has 75% stabilized nitrogen. So that allows the customer to decide how many applications and the interval between applications for their given situation. So because we're working in so many regions now, we have we have areas that the growing season is six to seven months long. We have other parts of the country where the growing season is eight to 10 months. And then we have areas like down in Florida where it's it's year round. So it allows us to decide how frequently we're gonna make applications and making sure that we have a good amount of nitrogen available through that entire cycle between our applications, but yet still giving them the water management, the humates and the micronutrients along the way. I really think in volume, these are gonna be the two that are gonna be the highest volume. Um, we're working on some of our, our early season planning and I'm doing a number of trainings throughout the Western United States. And I would say that our first orders for these two products are going to be truckload quantities because of how popular they are. The other thing that when we built these products, um, we did because again, that phosphorus restriction in a number of the cool season markets throughout the United States, we chose to keep the phosphorus out of those blends because we have such a large part of our geographies that phosphorus is restricted in lawn care fertilizer blends, unless you have a soil report. But I, I do believe that as we start to develop, we talk to our sales reps and the TMs and really pinpoint what they need the most in their markets that we'll find that over time we're going to develop some blends with a little bit of phosphorus for those specific market needs and those lawn care markets throughout the United States. These two are really cool products because they have all three of our, you know, main additives for the G plus line with the AquaCare, the MicroSurge, the Black Caviar. I think that's going to add a lot to the results that the customers are going to see who are using this. Sure. A lot of times... I think these these are going to be customers that have maybe never tried a wedding agent, maybe yep. have never used a sprayable micronutrient before, or even have ever used a humate. So it's going to maybe take some discussion when it comes time to talk about the fertilizers. But mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. can get to the point where you're explaining what are these products that we're adding and why are they in the blend and what makes it so important, I think people are going to jump on board and it's going to be a game changer for a lot of the LCOs that have typically been urea and and phosphorus users well and you know one of the things that was interesting because i i actually when i developed the first phase of this with the original blends one of the main blends that i developed was a 2137 and it was stabilized nitrogen organics 
46 black and a wedding agent and many of the of the actual people that were distributing it um they they were a little bit skeptical because they'd never been exposed to any wedding agent technology and i think there was some you know there was some misconception that there was a lot of snake oil with these products so once they started to use them and they saw the effects and you know i've had a couple of the guys that I, I worked with quite a bit and sold a lot of the product they're like you know i had the neighbors come over and say what fertilizer do you use because your yard is the nicest yard on the block and he's like i use the black bag and yeah. <laughs> I, i've used i use it three applications a year and 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 it really was something that that people were like wow well that's can I get the black bag? Can you bring some home for me? So they started buying product at the at the branches and bringing it home for the neighbors because they saw the results of the product. So I think once people experience the the quality and the performance of these products in the G plus line, we're going to see that spread throughout the entire in the in the entire market and through all of our brands. Um, you know, one of the things that I think that I, I really believe once we launch this and I saw this in the trains that I was, I've been working on and in my discussions with people, as we start to, as we start to highlight these products is that, um, people, people are excited and they have some of their own ideas in their minds. And I think that we're going to get requests and we're going to start to develop other combinations or we're going to look at other parts of the proprietary line that could be potentially utilized as a as a value added component to our G plus line. Um, I think one of the other things that I think is going to be a really cool highlight is that um, since I've been doing all the talking, why don't you tell me about why the bag is so unique? OK, uh, yeah, this is a recycled bag. Part of the bag is recycled. So we take virgin plastic and we mix it in with two new plastic liners. And so you make the bag, put the fertilizer in, and we've got now a recyclable bag made up of partly recycled materials. So very sustainable, eco-friendly type of bag. And I think that's going to mean something to certain parts of, of the markets. Oh, I, I, I definitely do. I, I actually, I mentioned that in my, in my presentation and uh, when I was talking about it and I brought up the, I, unfortunately I forgot the bag again. So I, this week I forgot to bring my sample bag twice, but it is what it is. So um, I, I think that the, everyone was very open. They love the idea. They love the concept. Um, it's something that they had not heard of. And I know recycling and plastics and everything are a big part of our of our of our society and our conversation right now. And I think the other thing that behind the scenes that you'll see um, in our blends is that we are not using any poly coated product in any of our blends. So along the way with looking at the blends that fit certain parts of the country, and then also looking at what's in the bag, what are our value added products in the bag, you'll see that we have not used poly coated products. So that's part of the theme that's been that's been given to us as we've developed these products. So we're going to utilize nitrogen sources and we're going to use things in the bag that don't have a poly coat. We have the recycled bag. So one of the themes that we at Heritage here are trying to are trying to accomplish is we're trying to reduce our plastic footprint into the environment. I think that's important as we move forward. And I think that's something that's going to be focused on in certain parts of the country more maybe than others, but it's a theme that's not going to go away. Totally. And, you know, the, the plastic on the fertilizer, the plastic coated fertilizers, those are not able to have all these different additives Correct. in the bag. Yes. So where, you know, maybe you might lose out on a little bit of nitrogen release with your poly coat, you're getting aqua care, you're getting micro surge, you're getting black caviar. There's other things maybe more valuable to the plant than a plastic. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. So, um, I think that, uh, I think overall, um, we're going to, with this line, we're going to get into new markets. We're bringing new ideas to the market. We're bringing new technology to the fertilizer market. And honestly, at the end of the day, I, I think that it's going to be a very successful, um launch for us with our gravity g plus 
It's been a long time coming. We're really it has. About it. You know, you know, I'll feel much better when I when I go to the facility and I go to the branches and I see rows and rows of our new bags and our new fertilizer, and I'll, I'll, I'll breathe a sigh of relief bag. at that point in time. Yep. All, all your neighbors are going to be asking, where'd you get the gold bag? Where can I get one of those? Where can I get the gold bag? Yep. So it's going to be good. Thank you for stopping by for another episode of Mass Tangent. We appreciate it. Go buy some G plus. If you have questions about any of our products, please feel free to reach out to Rob and I on the podcast here, or you can reach out to your local heritage PPG representative. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks guys.